morning, everyone, and welcome to Holy Rosary Church, Mary Mother of God Parish. As we celebrate the feast day of St. Thomas the Apostle, it's a first class feast, so we will also say the Gloria today as well. So let us begin this Mass in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Thank you. Let us call to mind our own faults, failings, and sins. Let us ask our Lord, our Blessed Mother, St. Thomas, and all the saints to help us to know our sins and be sorry for them. Please join me in the Confidior. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. For you are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, and you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grant Almighty God that we may glory in the feast of the blessed Apostle Thomas, so that we may always be sustained by his intercession and believing may have life in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, whom Thomas acknowledged as Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the Holy Ones and members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the capstone. Through him the whole structure is held together and grows into a temple sacred in the Lord in him you also are being built together into a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For steadfast is his kindness for us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen, but still believe. Alleluia, alleluia, 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Thomas called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks, put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, the disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here in my hands and put your hand into my side and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus told Thomas and all of the apostles, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This was before his crucifixion and his resurrection. So Thomas kind of had doubts even before the, the crucifixion of Jesus and the, the crucifixion event was perhaps so staggering for Thomas that he began to lose a bit of his faith in Jesus and his belief began to wane a bit. As we heard, he was with the apostles the second week that Jesus appeared. And he said, I won't, be, I won't believe until I put my finger into the nail marks and my hand into his side. And then Thomas makes one of the most um, solemn professions of faith. My Lord and my God. Can't get any clearer than that. Now, sometimes we think in negative terms about Thomas. We call people who may be not so sure about what we're saying or what the truth of what is being talked about and so on, and we say, oh, you're a doubting Thomas, a doubting Thomas, a doubting Thomas. My friends, we're all doubting Thomases. We're all doubting Thomas. Until we see the Lord face to face in his kingdom, in the life after this, in the eternal life that he has called us, when we come to the Father through Jesus, then there will be no more doubts. Sometimes, you know, life gets tough for us. And sometimes we wonder, is there a God? Sometimes we want even the best of us, the most fervent among us. I take an example of Mother Teresa, Saint Mother Teresa, who dedicated her whole life in serving the She had doubts whether God was aware of her work, or aware of her. Uh, she had doubts whether at times God even existed when she saw so much tragedy in the streets of Calcutta. God, why do you permit this? Why, you know, are you here among your people? Where are you? We have some of those same doubts, I think, too when we have problems and crises in our own lives. So let's not go pointing fingers at Thomas today. 
point a finger at ourselves. We're all doubting Thomases. And we won't be absolutely certain and absolutely sure about who Jesus is and what he says until we see him face to face in the kingdom. Yes, we believe. Our belief is hopefully very strong, but that belief is tattered at times by the circumstances of our lives. So sometimes we say, you know, I want to put my finger in the nail marks and put my hand into his side. Well, we don't have to go to that extreme. Because when the word is proclaimed from the gospel, it is Jesus himself who speaks to us. When we consecrate the piece of bread and the cup of wine, that is Jesus himself, his body and blood that is shared among us and nourishes our spiritual lives of faith. So let us not be accusatory of this wonderful apostle who gave up his whole life for his newfound belief in Jesus. And Jesus said to him, blessed are you, Thomas, because you have seen me, but blessed are those as St. Paul says, of the household of the Lord, that's you and me, who have not seen him face to face, but still believe. May I invite you to stand now and together with our firm belief, let us make our petitions known to the Lord. That God will strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who suffer from injustice, whether at the hands of individuals, institutions, or government, can receive justice in their time of need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and their caregivers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who asked us to pray for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Mike Laughlin, for whom this Mass is being offered, may they be at peace with God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us turn to our Blessed Mother, that she may encourage us in our belief in her Son to be truly God's presence among us as we pray. Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace, full of grace. The, Lord the Lord is with thee. With thee. Blessed, blessed art thou amongst, amongst women, women, and blessed, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, womb Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of Mother God, God, pray for pray us for sinners, us sin. now and at the hour of our, our death. death. Amen. of this water and wine may become to share in the divinity of Christ who humbles himself to share in our humanity. Bless you, Lord God, of all creation, through goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth is given in human hands and made it will become for us the bread of life. Bless you, Lord God, of all creation, through goodness we have this wine to offer, Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. But God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humbled and contrite hearts. And Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. In union with the belief of St. Thomas, let us stand and pray that your sacrifice and mine will be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Accept the sacrifice at your hands. Praise and glory of his name. 
for our good and good of all this holy church. We render you, O Lord, the service that is your due, humbly imploring you to keep safe your gifts to us, as we honor the confession of the Apostle St. Thomas and offer you a sacrifice of praise through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just, a duty in our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. You have built your church to stand firm on the apostolic foundations of St. Thomas and all the apostles, to be a lasting sign of your holiness on earth, and to offer all humanity your heavenly teaching. Therefore, now and for all ages unending, and with the hosts of angels, we too sing with, with all our hearts, crying out as we all acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Be holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, handed it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Give you thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them, Lord, into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her devoted spouse, with the Apostle Thomas, and all of the Apostles, Martyrs, and Saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. May we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray now for our daily bread, as Jesus himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and grant us peace in our days. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all distress and unbelief as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you this morning. Let us share that peace with one another. Lamb of God. Behold, our risen Lord, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are we this morning who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Bring your hand and feel the place of the nails, and do not be unbelieving, but believing. Let us pray. O God, as we truly received in this sacrament the body of your only begotten Son, grant, we pray, that we may recognize him with the Apostle Thomas by faith as our Lord and our God, and proclaim him by the deeds of our lives, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ, believing in his, his divinity. Thanks be to God. And have a wonderful day today and tomorrow, and uh, a safe day today and tomorrow. And, uh, and for a little prayer, thank our forefathers for what they did for all of us in carving out a new nation here in America for us to live in freedom and peace. Have a great day, everybody.